Hi, I'm Andrew Overman from Location Location, and as always, I'm joined by Michael Webb of Mortgage Matters. Each week, we gather together to answer your burning mortgage-related questions in the best way that we can to offer help and advice along your property purchase journey. And this week's question, Michael, is can I buy the property I currently rent from my landlord and would I need a deposit? Can I buy the property I currently rent from my landlord and would I need a deposit? Over to you. Yeah, great question. Um, and we've dealt with over the years, many people that have done this. Um, first thing I will address is we have had tenants um, approach us in the past and ask the question, I've been renting this property for 10 years. Is there any way of me forcing my landlord to sell it to me because I've, I've been living there? Um, and the answer to that is no, you can't actually force them to sell it to you. However, if your landlord um, is looking to sell the property, you're you're living in, um, you can buy that property. And whilst you do need a deposit, um, there is some criteria out there that allows the landlord to give you the deposit from the equity. So where we've had it in the past is where people have been very long term tenants in a property, say 10 years, um, and the landlord has a property that's worth, say, £200,000. But to avoid estate agent costs, having to evict you and having the void period and all of these sorts of things, they're willing to sell it to you for cheaper, say £180,000, because obviously they keep you in the property. They know that there's there's no going to be any complaints about the condition because you know the condition, you're living there. Lots of reasons to do it. Um, that 10% can be used as your deposit. Now, this is only possible in two instances. One where you are buying the property you reside in as a tenant from your landlord, and if you are buying a property off of a family member. So whilst, yes, technically a deposit does need to be accounted for, you don't need the cash. OK, now where we have to be very clear on this is if the property is worth 200, the landlord cannot say I'm selling it to you for 225 and giving you that 25 percent deposit. It does need to value up for uh, the mortgage valuation. OK, okay. so can't, as in days gone by with self-cert mortgages back in the early mid 90s, you can't inflate the price to incorporate what would yeah be i'm not sure you've ever been able to in, inflate prices and get away with it that easily you you might have many many years ago but yeah the the property needs to value at what it it it's worth and it needs to be a true discount of typically 10 percent. they won't do it at 95 in most cases so typically it needs to be a 90 percent mortgage or below um and you can then buy the property like that. The other um, time that you can do this is if you are um, a council tenant um, or a housing association tenant, as it's more commonly called now, um, and you have the right to buy the property, you will get a discount from the council on the overall value. They will have it valued and they'll say you've lived here for X amount of time that entitles you to X discount to purchase it. Again, that discount can be used to purchase the property. So I guess what we've established here is there is a couple of scenarios where you don't physically need a cash deposit. So there's three scenarios, but you do need to account a deposit within a discount of the value. They are the only three where that occurs. You can't say, well, I haven't got a deposit. Um, Andrew, you've got this property on for 250. Um, with Mr. Smith. Um, I'm going to offer him 225. He accepts that, but I'm going to put it through at 250 and account the 25% for they lenders don't accept vendor gifted deposits. Okay. Um, they they used to many years ago, as long as again it was a true discount, but mm -hmm. that's just outside of the criteria now. So a family member, a close family member, we're talking parents, grandparents, possibly siblings, um, you might get away with. Because again, it's seen as a gift and therefore makes sense. Um, and um, buying off of your landlord or your right to buy discount. And, and some of those um, right to buy discounts can get quite meaty, uh, depending on how long you've lived in them. But obviously, if you've lived in the property for a very long period of time, say 30 years, your ability to mortgage time wise gets quite tight at the end. So, 
Well, let me, that's very interesting, Michael. Let me give you a hypothetical then, because this is actually a scenario that I've um, recently encompassed on an appraisal. Um, I've got um, a couple who have just lost their mother and father, and they've inherited a property which is worth probably in the region of a quarter of a million. Um, and they were, uh, prior to losing their parents, going to look at uh, remortgaging and gifting their son and daughter, as we spoke about in the previous episodes, a deposit to buy a property. Um, now, with the, the you know the sad passing of their parents, they've got an opportunity where the the the, the, bung uh, the bungalow that's been bequeathed to them is um, in the right area for the son and daughter to live. Um, would they therefore be able to gift that at? The, the deposit at any value so if the if the property was 250 yeah. and they knew that their son could only get a mortgage for 125,000 could they give yeah they can gift the 125 yeah yeah obviously it needs to pass through probate and things like that um and and be in their name and and this is all a very simple explanation if that makes sense to a lender it makes sense look we we've inherited a property son needs one some can afford 125 properties worth 250 we're going to gift the 50 percent, and he will have full ownership of it um you do have as we've discussed before um on this um channel the potential of that 125 being brought back in to um in, into inheritance tax within a seven-year period but yeah of course um that that's very very possible Okay, um, so we also have in this scenario, for example, so where you'd have multiple siblings um, kind of inherit a property. So let's say um, a brother and a sister inherit a property uh, because their parents have passed and, and one of them wants to keep the property. What they can do is just mortgage it for the 50 percent to buy out the other person as part of the kind of probate process. Right. OK. So, um, yeah, there, so that, there's ways really to do that. In 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 terms of you know um, a, a property with immediate family members uh, and uh, you know social housing um, as uh, or affordable housing with the right to buy, um, and then back to the original question, which was, can I buy the property I currently rent from my landlord, and would I need a deposit? And 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 the answer to that is yes, absolutely. You can buy directly from your landlord. Um, it will save your landlord time, inconvenience, estate agents fees, potential repair costs on the property, um, and and uh, potentially a huge amount of inconvenience in having to serve notice and you to find another mm -hmm. property. Um, and in terms of needing a deposit, if your landlord is willing to reflect the length of ownership, the fact that you're taking it as is, warts and all, um, within the uh, value that he uh, sells the property to you. So factoring in, he's not paying estate agents fees and it's a relatively simple transaction. Um, and there is a genuine deposit there. So we're not inflating the value. We're saying that it's a £200,000 property because you've been there for 15 years paying £900 a month. I'm willing to sell it to you for convenience because I want to get shot of it within four to six weeks at 180000 That's your 10% deposit and that's perfectly plausible. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Brilliant. As always, Michael, you're an absolute genius. We uh, always come to you for your expertise in the mortgage world. If uh, our viewers wanted to contact you with a question of their own, how would they go about that, Michael? Um, probably via our website be the best place, so mortgagerepublic.co.uk. You can request a call back on the website. There's plenty of information there as well. Um, you can call the office on 01842 816 120, or my email is michael at mortgagerepublic.co.uk. Brilliant. Thank you to you guys for watching from myself, Andrew Overman and himself, Michael Webb. Uh, we'll be back next week answering your burning mortgage questions. Thanks for your time. Lovely. Thank you, Andrew.